I love you, Wade Wilson. We can fight this. You're right. The cancer's only my liver, lungs, prostate, and brain. It's all things I can live without. What if I told you we can make you better? You're a fighter. We can give you abilities most men only dream of. Make you a superhero. You just promise you'll do right by me, so I can do right by someone else. And please don't make the super suit green or animated. One thing that never survives this place is a sense of humor. Uh, we'll see about that, Pop Spice. Oh, come on. You gonna leave me all alone here with less angry Rosie O'Donnell? wondering why the red suit well that's so bad guys can't see me bleed this guy's got the right idea he wore the brown pants daddy needs to express some rage It reeks like old lady pants in here. Sounds like you have a dick in your mouth. Oh, motherfucker, you are hard to look at. Like a testicle with teeth. You look like Freddy Krueger face fucked a topographical map of Utah. Exactly. I'm touching myself tonight. You are haunting. You look like an avocado had sex with an older avocado. Thank you. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. I think this is probably the only time in my life that I'm gonna be towering over Deadpool. Uh, I don't mind at all. You may be wondering why we've brought you here. <laughs> <laughs> you guys today are gonna witness a live birth. Yes, are you ready? This is gonna get weird. Each of you have been brought here because of your specific skill set. Yeah. <laughs> you, a master in bombs. <laughs> and Ajax will have his way with you. Yes. yes. He will. Well, in all seriousness, one of the big pleasures of my job is that you talk to people over the years and you talk to them as they're starting to work on specific projects. And the last time we spoke, you were just starting production on Deadpool. Yeah. yeah. So now we have the finished product, which is badass, good, awesome. Yeah. That's terrible English and I apologize. That's all right, that's fine. But that's fine. let's take it. talk me through, you're one of the producers, a co-writer, you did craft services, you chauffeured uh, yeah. Morena to set. Yeah. I'm really needy. Yeah. 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 She really is. Um, she really is. So kind of talk me through your process of bringing this project well, to the film. For me, it's been an 11 year journey. I've been trying to get this movie made since 2004. It was first, I was first introduced to the Deadpool comics by another studio executive who said, if they ever make a Deadpool movie, you're Deadpool. And I said, I, well, I, what is Deadpool? I, as far as I knew then, it was a, it was a Clint Eastwood movie, um, <laughs> and which is really a Clint Eastwood movie called Deadpool. Um, and uh, I read the comics. I remember the first one I opened had a panel in it where uh, somebody asked Deadpool what he looks like, and he says, I look like Ryan Reynolds crossed with a Sharpay. And at that moment, I thought, wow, this is some weird destiny at work here. Mm -hmm. um, and then I spent... I think literally, quite literally the next five years or six years just trying to get Fox to make the movie and, and I just kept getting the door shut in my face and uh, every time we got a little bit more momentum it, we would take a couple steps back and then uh, eventually we were able to make some test materials some, some, which leaked onto the internet two years ago and that's how we're sitting here today. I mean this, this is quite literally, and I'm not exaggerating, I've, the, one of the first Marvel any comic book movie fan movies ever made. Um, it's, 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 it was propelled into production exclusively by the fans. Uh, they overwhelmed 20th Century Fox with tweets, Instagrams, hate mail, 
uh, uh, someone did some skywriting, I think. And it, basically, they said yes. They overwhelmed them, and they said yes. And they not only let us make the movie, but they let us make the movie as a, a rated R Marvel X-Men superhero film. And that brings me to my next question. Yeah. How did you push that through? I mean, you never see a Marvel movie that is raunchy, yeah. v- foul, yeah. uh, has a really super sexy leading man. Oh, wow. In, yeah. Yeah, that's, Thank that's you that, very that, much. Sexy leading man in a Marvel movie. Thank you very much. Thank you. And even the opening credits are so tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. I, well, Deadpool, we felt like Deadpool, in order to do it, it had to be that way. Mm-hmm. Had, we had to have no ceiling uh, and no limit. In order to do the comic book serious justice, we felt like we, we, we had to have the, the ability to be completely free with the character. And Deadpool's... You know, he's one of the only protagonists in a comic book movie that's that's also morally flexible. So if you're going to put a guy on screen uh, uh, with some degree of faith that that is morally flexible, he's got to be able to say and do anything. I mean, you know, so we we do we in fact say and do anything, anything. in this movie. Um, and the movie's meta as well, so that always helps. I mean, there's jokes in there about. I mean, I'm I'm making jokes about you know my buddy Hugh Jackman. I'm making jokes about Deadpool. Makes jokes about Ryan Reynolds. And his, yes. and his hideous acting techniques. No, uh, I believe the line yeah. was, do you think Ryan Reynolds got his career? On his, his superior his acting, acting method? Yeah. No, looks are everything. everything. <laughs> That's what Deadpool says, yeah. Morena. Yes. You guys apparently shot all the sex scenes in, what, 20 minutes? I'm exaggerating, okay. a day. Long a day, right? <laughs> yes. It was which, which is a record for any of the guys here on stage. <laughs> So what was that like for you? Had you guys known each other beforehand? We'd known each other a bit. Yeah. Um, we'd met before. Met and years before, yeah. Yeah, um, and I have to say, obviously that stuff is nerve-wracking and it sucks, mm-hmm. you know, and it's not as sexy as everybody thinks it is. I mean, Easy. it's basically like a room like this full of people and you're, like, trying yeah. to work. But we were trying to come up with absurd and insane ways these characters would copulate. Yeah. And that's what was the fun in doing it. And yeah. when you see it, I mean, you should see what was left on the cutting room floor. Yeah, there's some pretty graphic. <laughs> is it going to cu- go on the DVD? Uh, yeah, I th- this DVD is going to be uh, probably like a box set. There's a lot of stuff. That, that <laughs> by the time by the time I put on the strap on, yeah, and I was behind Ryan, we were fairly comfortable with each other at that point. I I well, so, I, mean, I so have... wish you were kidding. <laughs> She's not. You do have to deal with Deadpool's sexual proclivities, so yeah. there you yeah. definitely deals with that. Yeah, definitely. Um, Ed. Ajax, what is your name? No, I'm not even going to. How did you come to do this? How did I come to do it? Same as every job. I, uh, I got an audition, you know, and, um, and uh, I auditioned for it. I did a self-tape in my front room, my living room, with my personal trainer, who's six foot nine. Um, I auditioned for it in the same day. I did two self-tapes in the same day, one for Fargo season two, which I thought was a fantastic tape. <laughs> I never heard back from them. Um, my personal trainer, Serbo, was like, yeah, I don't think you're getting that Deadpool gig. Um, and um, You really have a personal trainer named Serbo, and he's not a villain? <laughs> and he is from Serbia. Wow. He's almost seven feet, so all of your self-tapes are you going... <laughs> Fargo! <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why I didn't get it. Yeah. Shit. But, um, but yeah, it was, just, it was as simple as that. And then there was a, a second uh, audition with a... Uh, casting director in London and I remember going in there and she said you know do you want to read the script it's here you know to, to, to further understand it and, and, and understand this world and I was like nah let's go I'm ready for this I understand the character I understand uh, Ridge as his code name was um, and I just went straight in we did it I think we only did about three takes left and, um, and, it's, and it's a great joy here we are and TJ, were you a fan of the comic books? I just want to say I'm a fan of you. Each person that you go to, I like that you're like, Morena, uh, yeah. Ed. Yeah. Well, I want to make And then sure with me, you're like, so TJ, did you like the comic books? Yeah. I need to make what sure kind of every- fucking nonsense is going to come out of your mouth? <laughs> I, I suffer fools gladly. Welcome to America Online. <laughs> now global. Uh, I, what, I didn't even know what Deadpool was. I, I totally did not... And I'm not a big comic book guy, but I think that, that that helps in some ways because you don't have to be a comic book person at all. When you see this movie, it's so self-aware, it's so funny, it's so ridiculous. And so once I understood that it was R-rated, that it was Ryan Reynolds, that it was, uh, well, really, that it was Ed, uh, 
I, I, I thought, okay, this is really up my alley. And then once I read the script, which I still haven't, but I assume I will at one point. Yeah. Should. I was like, and this has Good kind read. of a nihilistic tone in yeah. some ways. So you Mostly free- pictures. This yeah, it's just, right. yes. It, they so, gave me a storyboard. So wait, were you miming Hollywood. the whole thing or freestyling or what were you doing if you don't read yeah, the script? Yeah, we, I mean, it, Tim Miller was so great because as a first time director, he really turned to all of us and said, listen, you have some expertise that I don't have and I have some that you don't mm-hmm. have, so let's collaborate and work together. And luckily, Ryan comes from an improv, uh, improvisational background. And so, yeah, there was a lot of riffing, but we were working with a great script to begin with. So it was a, a pretty, uh, it was a joyous occasion on every day of the set. Yes. Joyous occasion every day on the set. That's mm-hmm. beautiful. Mm-hmm. No, Ryan, really, was it a joyous occasion every day? Uh, the it was, actually. It was the most fun I've ever had on anything ever. I mean, not only just the film, but like the marketing on this movie has been an extension yeah. of principal photography. Like, it never stopped. We just kind of, the, on the last day of shooting, I, I, I left with a suit. And I said, if anyone wants the suit, I've waited 10 years to do the movie. If you want the suit, come fucking take it. Uh, <laughs> I just went home with it. I was like, this is coming home with me. This is my one souvenir. That and a stuffed unicorn wearing leather assless chaps. Uh, <laughs> but those were it. And, and really, I, I didn't believe it at the time. I, I would have never guessed, but I kept wearing I mean, that suit we made such good use of because we were doing so many viral marketing videos. Some of them mm-hmm. I just shot in my home. I'm not even kidding. And, and, and that's never really stopped. And, then, and I actually have to give... Fox a lot of uh, credit to that is that they just really embraced this idea that we could have a completely unorthodox and absurd marketing campaign that is an extension of the tone and material in the film. And it was, I love that. I love that. I wish all movies could do that, but Deadpool's very meta. He addresses the audience. He gives you a flexibility in the marketing that you wouldn't have any other way. So Well, but also all the meta... Uh Aspects aside and all the dark humor aside, there's also, you know, he gets, he gets cancer, as he does in the comic book. Mm-hmm. And that, I think, really, I mean, we talked about it a little backstage, really gives the movie pathos and humanity. Yeah. And the way you yeah. played that. I well, think you, can't, really... you can't have a character that just for, you know, 107 minutes or however long the, the film is, just unhinge his jaw and go completely bananas mm-hmm. from, you know, act one through act three. You have to tether him to earth somehow. So there's, a, there's actually a love story. I mean, we did these jokey, jokey kind of marketing billboards where we, we sort of look like Deadpool's The Notebook or something. It's just the like, greatest. Kind of love the this. best, yeah. <laughs> and, and, but in a weird way, there's some truth to it. I mean, there is... There is uh, I mean, we don't have a scene where we embrace uh, and French kiss in the rain, but we have, uh, we do have a real love story. There. Yeah. there is something very, there's it's something. Ashes. Yeah, it's like, but it anchors the character. You have to have him anchored in something. So he, yeah, he gets cancer. He goes into this treatment facility to try to save his life. They uh, do terrible, terrible, horrible Not things Not they, to him. him. Well, he does, yeah. Experimenting on You're him. a bad dude. And, yeah. You're really yes, bad. I yes, yes, I am. Yeah. I'm going to just say this really quickly. What's cool about the movie is it is so funny, it is so different. It's an R-rated comic book movie. There, it, it is meta, it's all those things. But it's also such a good showcase for Ryan. It's mm-hmm. like you've never seen someone do all of these different things, and tonally it's so different. But he does the heavy lifting as an actor. I think it was a good showcase for everybody in the sense that you know the love story is so visceral, and you're like crying like a baby, and your wife is like, TJ, get it together. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Um, but it, so that's another great thing about the movie is that it's so dynamic. So you're also not going and seeing just you know a movie that is one note. And Marina, that's sweet you of know. you, TJ. I, I I do. You'll notice one thing. Whenever TJ speaks, I never drink right while he's speaking because I've I've done so many spit takes. Oh. I'm jealous of your hair, Ryan Reynolds. I'm jealous of your hair. <laughs> Marina, how did you develop Vanessa? Because she's really not one note. I mean, she really. She's a fully fled, she's a full fledged badass. She's actually, real, she's a real chick. Yeah, yeah. She's a real woman. Well, it's really all in the script. They did a phenomenal job writing. Stop her. giving Ryan Reynolds so many damn compliments. That's Rhett Reese it. and Paul Wernick. That's not me. I helped with a lot of stuff, but those guys had. Oh this, yeah, those guys, guys wrote this, a phenomenal skills, script. And and when I when I read it, I was like, wow, this is something you never see mm-hmm. in an action film or in a superhero film. Is the chick that doesn't need rescuing, who actually calls him an asshole when he rescues yes. her. Um, is it was amazing. And then. In the audition process, I just kept hearing over and over again, you know, like, she's the kind of girl that you, like, throw down and have a beer with. Mm-hmm. Like, don't be all precious and whatever. And so in our audition, I think I might have scared Ryan a little bit. I just, like, walked right in, sat on his lap, and, you know, was like, all right, let's do this. Well, at least you didn't sit in his face. <laughs> she said she was going to. That's true. So there is that. So I mean, dark. second date, maybe. So second dark. date, you're right. TJ and I met at a glory hole. Um, you were saying. Both of us, we looked through the hole to see what's happening, and we made eye contact, and I was like, let's do a movie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it was love? 
I love it Ish. first sight. It was love at first sight. This is the I I'm so in love with the cast of this film. I mean every single one. It was it was it's not often that you get to shoot a film like this that shoots for a long period of time and you don't have one rotten apple in the bunch. I mean from everyone from the craft service guy right through to the the director of the film. So it's really really special it's experience. It's a fun one to do. Yeah. For each of you, what was the toughest scene to shoot? For me it was their sex scene because they wouldn't allow me on set. <laughs> That was a tough scene, because I really tried to get in. They kept me outside. It was awful, yeah. I, I, I'm really sorry. I can't even make love unless I'm having heavy eye contact with TJ Miller. <laughs> so my wife is pissed. It's this, been very expensive for both of it's us. It's a new development, yeah. TJ, what have you done to their marriage? I yeah. mean, it's so many things. <laughs> so many things. What did you think? Was the, I mean, these two also had a nude scene, so to speak. Yeah. I'm the, I, we had a, a fight. <laughs> I had to be completely uh, naked in a burning building. Yeah. I'm the youngest of four boys, so it's not the first time I've fought a man naked in a burning building. <laughs> but it was pretty intense. That was an intense day. That was nuts. And, and, and Ed, I remember Ed, Ed was training and training and training for the movie. I mean, doing all kinds of with crazy... With his Serbian personal trainer? Yeah, with Martin Wayne's yeah. seven-foot trainer. Of course he's going to get in shape. And he's, he's learning all these amazing kind of martial arts and yeah. boxing maneuvers, all these kinds of things. And I remember you sent an email, I think, to Tim Miller, the director, and said, I've been doing all this kind of training. I can't wait to do this. And then Tim forwarded the email to me, and I just wrote back, because he was like, Tim was saying, Ryan, get ready. You should get ready. This guy's like really learning serious fighting techniques. And I just wrote back, can't we just shoot him? <laughs> Indiana Jones style. It was really hard for me. I have a Serbian trainer. Ironically, his name is Josh. And, uh, <laughs> I worked with him for about a half an hour on all the stuff that I had to do in the film. And uh, Like the beers. Like, yeah, uh, it's rigorous. I'm moving yeah. my arm throughout the yeah, entire yeah, yeah, film. No, I, know, I don't know, I know if you guys have seen that. But so that was new for me as well. Like the yeah. phone call you make, that took a lot of muscle tone. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Are you kidding? That's I'm all no, forearm kidding. work. That's all forearm work. <laughs> for you, Morena, what um, was, was it being in the... And I, I don't want to give everything away, so I don't, Well, let's give know. it away. I mean, let's why not? Let's give it away. Fine. Uh, uh, believe it or not, the action stuff was not the hardest. I had fun doing that stuff. Um, we were well-trained. But I think it was the last scene of the movie was the hardest for me because, because of the prosthetics and the way it was shot, we had to break it up into two days. And the very last scene that these characters have together is very emotional, and uh, it's a huge moment for them. And, and we ended up shooting it you know, two consecutive days. So you get in the middle of the scene and you're like up and you're amped and you're ready mm -hmm. to go and then you got to pick it up the next day and so it was hard for yeah. me to... But that, 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 that was an incredible scene, Marina. I mean, Thank I... You. I, was, I was fishing for a compliment. No, no. <laughs> and here you've caught one. But yeah, you have. Good fishing. But um, I mean, that was one of the few scenes that I um, wasn't in as such that I just sat and watched. And I, I, I watched and I watched Tim Miller, our mensch, come out and cry because it was so emotional. And, he and cried? What she did, yeah. I mean... I said to Morena that, you know, Vanessa's actually my favorite character in the movie. She emotionally drives it forward. The rest of us are either caricatures or superhumans in some way. And she is the human who, who, who you, just sits in the middle and kind of anchors it. And, you know, what she showed in that scene, I, I, you know, was genuinely touching. It was beautiful. I, I didn't care for it. But yeah. Okay. Ryan, my favorite scene, not that you asked, was you and Crocs. Oh, I yeah, that yeah. Was Deadpool wears Crocs. Deadpool wears Crocs in the as, house. Also Spoiler known as alert. His big rubber masturbating shoes. Yes. Yeah. But for you, in terms of the prosthetics, yeah. what was that process like? You know, it's, it's, uh, we have this amazing um, makeup effects artist named Bill Corso who, who has done movies that you might know, like Lemony Snickets. And I mean, just this guy's incredibly good. Yeah. Uh, Fox Catcher. You know, he's, he's very good at taking actors' faces, completely erasing the <laughs> actor, but allowing everything they're feeling to still come mm -hmm. through. So um, that was a big one for me. I must have spent two straight weeks in his chair before we even started shooting, just testing different Deadpool makeups. And, um, and what he did was really incredible. But it was about four hours just to do the face each day, um, which is a long time. Uh, I, I ate through about five Ken Burns documentaries that are uh, 16 hours a piece. Uh, the Roosevelt <laughs> one is, the, the one of the Roosevelts is very hard to masturbate to, as I told uh, TJ Miller in one of our viral videos. Um, uh, God, I just see this woman here who's looking at me like... <laughs> Really? She, she's like, I thought the Jonas really? Brothers were going to yeah. be here. Um, <laughs> no. totally. I walked into the wrong studio. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it was tough. The makeup's always tough, but you don't complain. It's, it's, I'm so happy to be able to do this movie and, and this character. So it was, it was a privilege. The, the full body one is, was tough. That was about eight hours, and then you work 15 hours straight. So it's, those are like 
long, long days. Watching you take those off was very satisfying. What's that? Watching you take that off. Oh yeah. At the end of the day, I just would rip it off, and it It was was so not how you're supposed to take. (laughs) No, it's probably like um, um, exfoliating, right? Kind of, but it was, was super gross. I mean, I would super pull gross. up, there'd be like five pounds of rubbery, sweaty ball, and then I would like <laughs> toss it to like the cameraman or something. And he wouldn't, he just doesn't realize he's just worked 20 hours and he'll just catch anything you throw at him. <laughs> it, it, but I remember when we had the fight in the, uh, in the workshop, the naked fight as such, if you want to coin it that. Sure. The naked fight we had on camera. Yeah. Um, oh, wait, you guys were doing naked fights off camera? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, very kind of fights, okay. kind of love. Lo- love you, train. you know, violence and lust are quite close in our relationship. <laughs> Marina, um, is this true? Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. gl- like gladiator style? Yeah, yeah, I watched. Cool. Yeah, we let her watch. TJ, we don't let him watch. But um, TJ, we, we, who did there you was, piss off? There was a wonderful moment where... A wonderful slash disgusting moment where we, where we were fighting and I had to get him in an arm lock and I squeezed his neck... And the, the, the prosthetic split and his sweat, man juice, as you will, seeped out his neck all down my arm. And it was, you know, <laughs> if we weren't close at that point, yeah. you know, then, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I had a great was, moment where uh, at the end of one day, I was talking to Ryan about the day and, you know, what, what we'd done and how well it had gone and everything. And he's just tearing the, the, the prosthetics <laughs> off talking to me, but he doesn't notice it. So you're just talking to this guy, and as he, he, you're talking to him, he's just ripping his face off. It was very surreal. I was like, do you know how weird you look right now? And he was just like, I don't give a fuck. Just get this thing off of me. <laughs> yeah. Ryan, and how does it, before we turn this over to the audience, how does it feel knowing? I mean, you shepherded this baby through, you got it made, and now the reviews, for those of you who don't read them, have been s- s- pretty amazing. Yeah. How does it feel? Um, well, I mean, you know, I'm an actor, so I have an insatiable black hole for validation. Okay. Um, but you're also a producer of Just and an craft unquenchable services. thirst. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, ama- it's amazing. Look, the, at the end of the day, for us, it's just a win that the movie got made alone. You know, that, that, that is just a miracle. And, and, you know, sometimes, occasionally, once in a blue moon, the long game pays off. And um, I, uh, I certainly am no stranger to comic book movies, uh, to, to wildly varying degrees of success. <laughs> um, but to get to make this one and to get to make it the right way and something I've wanted to do for that long, is just, it's such a, for me, it was kind of a miracle. So I'm, yeah, thrilled. And he made it, he, he, he worked so hard to make it R-rated. Like, it's... You know, but you couldn't have made this. I mean, if it was PG-rated, it wouldn't have done service to the comic It would be book. three minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it would be him in the cab in the opening scene, and that would be the movie. Yeah, it's funny. It's different. Ever like in the UK, it's like rated 15, which sort of baffles me. Uh, here, it's obviously rated R. In China, it's rated "fuck you, you'll never see this." Uh, <laughs> in, in Taiwan, it's like 16. It's just a where you never know. Yeah, how it's gonna how it's gonna go. It's all right. I'm taking it's, my five year old to opening night. So. I think that's a oh, wise. Yes. I have a one year old daughter. I'm waiting six more months until I show her the film. But wait, wait, wait. But you said she already saw the whole thing. Yeah, she's, she's been in the edit room. She's seen, <laughs> She's going to be reenacting that moment with crude sock puppets to her therapist for the rest of her life. (laughs) And uh, clearly we have no one in the audience that wants to ask a question, I'm sure. I'm being sarcastic. Let's let's go. We're going to start with a question from an online viewer. So David would like to know for everyone, did you watch any other superhero movies to prepare for the film? And if so, which ones? Green Lantern. Totally. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like the blueprint for this film. Here's what you don't do, ever. Um, yeah. Did you watch any other movie? We watched, so, uh, you know what, one, one film, which is weird, Eastern Promises, which I know is like the weirdest reference, but we love that fight in, uh, where Viggo Mortensen fights another man in a sauna. That's why our fight oh, that's is a completely great naked. Scene. Yeah. Because to me, there's nothing more terrifying than fighting a man who's unafraid to, you know, have his penis punched. I mean, <laughs> that's a guy that, like, you want to get out of his way. Also, the two guys... Uh, in question are yeah. immortal. So the yeah, cat, so exactly. That problem. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know any other. You guys. I mean, the, a big influence was Blade Runner, which is not a, a superhero movie, but you know, Roy Batty, Rutger Hauer's character was a huge influence and in, um, on Ajax. Um, I.e., I just tried to copy him, um, and um, yeah, and 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 Blade Two. And Yogi Bear 3D. Okay. Yeah. And Moreno. I don't watch movies, so. Okay. okay cool. <laughs> first time. First time. There's a first time for everything. Yeah. Are you going to watch this one? Oh, I've seen this one. Okay. This is the only one I'll watch over and over and over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right 
Hello, guys. Thank you so much for coming out. I actually have two questions. So my first question is, Ryan, you were saying that it's a miracle that the movie is even made. Are you now beginning to feel more pressure now that it's done, it's been edited to make, you know, another Avengers or another franchise movie? And also, I wanted to know if you guys can spoil for us what the end credit scene will be. Um, well, actually, the, 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 I'll start with the second question. The, the, the movie's been screening. We've been screening the hell out of it just because we love it and fans are going nuts for it. So they just obviously start showing people the movie for free and all that stuff uh, to spread word of mouth. But at the end, there is a, an after credits uh, tag that, that those people are, have been seeing. But they actually haven't been seeing. What they don't know is they haven't been seeing the real one. So that one actually will come out with the movie on Friday. So, so there is, yes, there is. There's actually two... Uh, uh, post credits codas for the film. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, there is. That's Spoiler exciting. alert: We're not going to spoil anything. Yeah. <laughs> what was the first question again? The, Are you now feeling more pressure that you're on oh. the press tour for the movie? Oh no, I mean I love the movie, so it's nice to talk of. I mean sometimes you 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 do press tours where you're totally full of shit. So it's nice when you're on a press tour where you just absolutely believe and love and love what you're doing. So I, I no, I, I don't feel that much pressure because I know we made the greatest Deadpool movie that could ever possibly be made in the history of cinema. So I, uh, those are bold words, I know. But uh, <laughs> it is, it's the great. But I actually, they're kind of so. true, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next question, please. Hi, I wanted to know, um, what is your favorite comic book villain? And can you all sign my Deadpool marriage poster? <laughs> I think we could probably sign it when we're done. Sure. Maybe. Is that all right? Um, favorite Deadpool, uh, favorite, sorry, favorite comic book villain. Wow, that's a great one. Um, I don't know, who's all running for president right now? Uh. There's one that's all. Donald Trump and some pussy, I think. <laughs> Uh, I like the Joker and Lips Manless. What do you guys That think? was going to be mine, the Joker. Yeah, Joker's a great one. Joker's a great one. Talk about the, there's a character which is, I mean, villains, villains and heroes blur in the anti-hero world of Deadpool, but there's a character called Taskmaster, who is just a brilliant character in the Daniel Way collection of Deadpool. Um, who was in our original script, but we had to take him out because he was too expensive. Yeah. That'll happen. Thank God you took him out and I got a chance to take yeah. him out. <laughs> no, he was in with you. I found out yesterday that Weasel becomes a superhero named the Penetrator. <laughs> Later He's on in not the kidding. series. <laughs> He's not getting in the sequel. <laughs> no, that one's going to be NC-17, I think. <laughs> Is this going to be the glory hole version? Yes, exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That'll be in the DVD box set also. Wow. One more question, please. Hi, guys. My name is Jesse. Long term, long time fan. I've been following this movie for 11 years on and off. I was at the screening last night. I met you briefly. Oh, great. Um, I loved it. It was absolutely perfect from a real Deadpool fan. I've been collected for 23 years. Great. And my quick question is, where did Maximum Effort come from? Because I noticed you kept saying the film. Yeah. And I know TJ autographs it on all the signatures. Yeah. Um, it's just something we put in. There were two things that, that are in the original script where Rhett Reese, Paul Wernick, and I were sitting in a hotel room in New Orleans. Maximum Effort was one of the first ones. It was just something we, we thought was co would be coined with the character. We loved it. That right before he does something that requires some courage, he sort of says maximum effort to himself. And then the other one was just the, actually, which is a weird one, is the Juice Newton song at the beginning of the movie, <laughs> uh, Angel of the Morning. You know, that, that, that song is, uh, was, has been in the script forever, and I'm so glad that we, got, we actually got the rights to it. So. Thank you. Can Thank I just God. enjoy really you, quickly man. that you said I'm a huge uh, Deadpool fan. I've been following this for 11 years on and off. I, I love the idea that you had off periods where you're like, I'm not following this movie. No. <laughs> I'm taking October off. This is bullshit. <laughs> Do you see what I'm dealing with here? I'm telling you, when we shot this movie, he says nothing that's in the script. You just point the fucking camera at him and I get Every out of the way. <laughs> oh. By on and off, as they kept saying, go. They yeah. They to do it. No, it's the worst relationship I've ever been into. Trust me. <laughs> sure. One day we're on. One day we're sleeping together. The next we're off again, and then eventually we got married. It, it was just so <laughs> surreal to see you guys on the big screen. It meant everything to me, and I know a lot of other oh, fans that awesome. feel the same way. And like Thanks, literally dude. last night, I got home Thanks. afterwards. I couldn't even fall asleep. It was just. It was Aww, a dream. That's great. Wow. Aww. No, no. But, awesome. But that was because he did a bunch of cocaine. It had nothing to do with the movie. <laughs> Thank you guys so much, and thank you to this amazing cast. Thank you. Deadpool opens on Friday. <laughs>